In this video, I'm going to walk you through a live streaming setup for churches that's quick to assemble and easy to use, even for small or portable churches. I'm going to walk you through all the gear you're going to need, as well as some of my favorite pieces of software for streaming to Facebook, YouTube, or a private server. Watch to the end because I think you'll discover that live streaming for your church doesn't have to be as expensive or complicated as it sounds, and with the right tools and a little bit of guidance, you can reach your church community online in just a few easy steps. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, an online resource for innovative and creative church leaders. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you'll receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church. Make sure you check out the show notes below for links to all of the gear and software mentioned in this video that's going to help you get up and running with your own live stream system. So what I'm going to do now is show you step by step how to build a live streaming system for your church. But please keep in mind that this system needs to be customized to your church's need and your own preferences. So the gear and software I use doesn't necessarily have to be the gear and software you use, but I think you'll still benefit from this video because you'll just have a more comprehensive understanding of how all this works, and then you can go about customizing it for your church. And before you dive into purchasing any gear or software for live streaming at your church, I encourage you to get together with the other leaders at your church and ask yourself some of these questions. Why do we need to live stream our worship gatherings online? What's the return on investment going to be? Because a lot of this costs money. So is it even going to be worthwhile for our church? Are we doing this merely to be cool or to be like Elevation Church and we think that we're going to have thousands of people tuning into our live stream every Sunday? Are there people in our church community who genuinely want to be a part of what happens on Sunday but they can't make it? It because maybe they're homebound or maybe in they're in the military and they just can't physically be with us. Will live streaming be a key part of our marketing strategy and how we reach people beyond our church? If a potential visitor sees our live stream for the first time, what kind of first impression would it make? Are we going to publish our live streams publicly on YouTube or Facebook or are we going to stream them to a private server where only people who know where to go will have access to it? I don't want to go into detail here about whether or not your church should be live streaming. But honestly, I don't think your church should be wasting any time or precious resources on a system like this if strategically it's not going to accomplish much for you. My friend Brady Shear has a fantastic video on this topic. So after you watch this video, make sure you check it out. He's going to help you think through this strategically. Assuming you are ready to move forward and live streaming makes strategic sense for your church, let's dive into this setup and how it all works. Keep in mind all the hardware and software I'm going to show you here is for my small church plant. Again, it has to be super quick to set up, it has to be easy to use for my volunteers. Those were the main reasons I made some decisions about the gear and software that I have here. I'm not going to be showing you an elaborate multi-cam live stream system that costs tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Everything you're about to see here costs just over $2,000. And as I walk you through the specifics of my setup, I'm going to kind of be walking you through just the general overview of how live streaming works. So you'll get it from a theoretical sense as well as you'll be able to see the hardware and how this all works together. So the first thing you're going to need is a computer that acts as your hub for your live stream. You can use a Mac or a PC and believe it or not, after doing a lot of research on this, it seems that having a PC is better for live streaming. But you can still have a great setup on a Mac and I'm going to show you my setup which runs on a Mac. Make sure your computer is going to have a solid internet connection and if you're really serious, have a standalone internet connection that's dedicated just to live streaming so you don't have any glitches or lag in your feed. So here with my setup, I'm going to be using my MacBook Pro. The next thing you're going to need is a video source. There's a large variety of ways you can do this, but I'm going to talk to you about two. The first way you can do this is by purchasing an inexpensive camcorder for 
a few hundred dollars, and I would recommend the Canon Vixia HF-R800. It's just over $200, and it has an HDMI output, which you'll need on any camera you try to use with this setup. From the camera, you're gonna send that video feed through the HDMI cable to an HDMI video capture device, which on the other side of that device has a USB cable that's gonna plug into your computer. So you're gonna have camera, you're gonna have HDMI to USB capture device, and then that's gonna go into your computer. When it's all said and done, when you use a camcorder and a video capture device, you're probably looking at around five to $600. Alternatively, you could buy a camera that has the USB functionality built into it, so you don't need a separate HDMI capture device. And that's what I have here. This is the PTZ Optics 20 time zoom USB camera. I'm really grateful for PTZ Optics for sending this to me so I can show you all what a great tool this can be for churches when it comes to live streaming. This camera runs around $1,800, so it's not cheap. It's not as cheap as getting a small little Canon camcorder, but here's why I like this camera and why I think it's worth the price tag. First, it's super compact. Look at the size of it compared to my hand here. So it's super small. It's gonna work great for our church context because again, we're set up and tear down church. We can't have big bulky items. This camera can easily be controlled via remote control. It can pan, it can tilt, and it can also zoom in and out. It can also be controlled by Ableton Live, which I'll be sure to make a video about that in the future. The image quality on this camera is also great. Actually, that's what you're seeing right now. I'm looking into the PTZ Optics camera, and I'm really happy with the dynamic range of this camera, and I actually have it at this angle purposely so that you see that even though I have the bright windows right here and the shadows on my face, you can still see decent detail. Since we're a church that meets in a large auditorium, I love having the ability to have this 20 times optical zoom, which it's super close to my face right now and looks ridiculous. It's probably can't even focus, it's too close. Um, but this is important when you are trying to stream a worship gathering because you have a large room, you need to be able to zoom in on people on stage or zoom back out wide to capture the whole stage. And you don't want digital zoom because that will look grainy and nasty. And finally, one of my favorite things about this camera is that it plugs into our streaming computer via USB. So we don't need another video capture device to go from HDMI to USB like you would with the camcorder. So for us at our church, the simpler the setup, the better. You simply plug it into the computer and it works. So those are a couple options for capturing the video portion of your live stream. And of course, you're gonna think through how you're gonna mount your camera or where you're gonna place it. At our church, I'm just gonna place it on top of a basic video tripod at the back of the room by our sound console. At your church, you may have a permanent worship space where you can mount your camera permanently. So you don't have to worry about setting it up or tearing it down every week. Now let's talk about capturing audio for our live stream. So like the video capture device, you're gonna have an audio capture device that's gonna be sending your audio feed from your sound console to your computer. I recommend having the ability to create a unique mix for your live stream because often things need to be mixed a bit differently for computer speakers or speakers on a mobile device versus what you're gonna be hearing from your PA system. So we use the Midas M32R, there's plenty of mix bus outs on that sound console. We could plug the USB cable from the Midas M32R directly into the computer and send audio that way, but I think there's a more simple way of doing it, and that is to use one of those XLR outputs from the back of the Midas M32R, one of the mix bus outs, and route that into a basic little audio interface, like what I have here, the Behringer UM2 interface. This is a $30 interface, and this is an easy way to send a unique mix from the board into an interface and into our computer for the live stream. And then our sound person can then, you know, put on his or her headphones to kind of dial in what mix would sound good for the live stream. And with this setup on our live stream computer, we won't need to be running, you know, a DAW like Ableton or Pro Tools or Logic to mix the sound from the sound console. It will be coming into the computer through this one mono input 
all mixed, all ready to go. So that's the audio setup. It's not quite as complicated, but you still wanna make sure that you do a great job streaming high quality audio with your video. And that covers all of the hardware we need for video capture and audio capture. So we have our video and audio coming to our computer, but now we need a software that's going to take that video and audio and put it together and then send it to the internet, to YouTube or Facebook or to a private server. In my opinion, this is the most difficult aspect of building your live stream system because the software you choose really depends on your context, whether you're using a Mac or PC and just your personal preferences. So here are a couple popular and great solutions. This first software you can check out, but I don't necessarily recommend is OBS Studio. It's a free software, it runs both on Mac and PC. Because it's free and open source, it means it's not quite as easy to use or plug and play as what I prefer. If you're gonna use OBS Studio, be prepared to go on YouTube, find a bunch of tutorial videos, and figure out how to configure it for your context. At our church, we simply don't have time to troubleshoot audio syncing issues and to have these little glitches that I was finding with OBS, so that's why i rather go find a affordable paid option for a software that's just gonna work well. For those of you using a Mac for your live stream, I recommend you using Ecamm Live. It's $79, it's super easy to use. You simply plug the camera into it, whether you have a setup like me, or if you have an HDMI capture device with a camcorder, and it just works. With this software, it also takes just seconds to log into your YouTube or Facebook accounts so you can send your live stream there. And Ecamm Live has a cool feature where you can monitor the comments on your Facebook Live without needing to open your browser window in Facebook to do that. You can do it all within Ecamm. If you are a PC user, then I recommend checking out vMix. It's very comparable in price to Ecamm Live. I honestly wish vMix was available for Mac because for live streaming a worship gathering, it might even be a little bit better than Ecamm Live. vMix does have a free version, but you have to pay $60 for the version that can stream in HD. So while these two pieces of software are not free, I think it's totally worth the price tag of $60 or $80 to save your team the headache when it comes to getting this all up and running. So finally, the last thing you need within this system is your Facebook account or YouTube account. So hopefully your church hasn't been living under a rock for the past 10 years and you already have those set up. They're free, they're easy to use. And no matter what software you go with, it's very easy to send your live stream to your account. Simply follow the support videos or instructions that come with those pieces of software. So that covers all of the hardware and software you're gonna need for a live stream system at your church. To recap, you have video capture device and an audio capture device. It's gonna send those signals to your computer where then it's gonna go into a software like Ecamm Live or OBS or vMix. And then from those pieces of software, whichever one you choose, you can then broadcast to YouTube, Facebook, or a private RTMP server. Now I wanna show you exactly what this looks like for our church's live stream system using the PTZ Optics camera, this Behringer interface, Mac, and Ecamm Live. So both this camera and the interface are just plugged into this MacBook Pro via USB. And we're gonna pretend that this mic right here is the mix coming from our sound console for our live stream. Because this mic is going into this audio interface into channel one. So everything's plugged in, ready to go. I'm gonna open up Ecamm Live. Then by default, Ecamm Live is using my FaceTime camera on my computer and it is using my computer's built-in microphone. And then it's really easy to select the right input. So I wanna go to camera. I'm gonna select PTZ Optics camera. It automatically detects it. So that's what you're seeing here. And I'll just pan that up a little bit, zoom out so we're not super close. So that's good to go with the video feed, and then under microphone, I'm gonna select USB audio codec. That is the Behringer UM2 interface that I have right here. And then under window, I can bring up my sound levels just to make sure that the sound is good so I can monitor, you know, if I turn it way up, it's gonna clip. I can turn it down on the interface 
to have a good healthy feed coming in there. So my video and audio are ready to go in Ecamm Live, so now I need to select the destination. So I could have record only or I can send it to YouTube or Facebook. For this example, I want to send it to YouTube. And it's important to keep in mind that you can actually have it record all broadcasts up here. So it'll send the broadcast to the internet, but it'll also record it locally on the computer. So I have YouTube set as a destination and then I'm gonna press login and I'll select the right channel and I'll allow it to manage my account. And then I will go ahead and make sure right now, I'm just gonna test out this live stream so I'll keep things on private because I don't really need all of you guys to see this random live stream. And I highly recommend you do the same when you test out your live streams. Always do it first in private mode. And then I'll hit get started here and I'm ready to go live on YouTube. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll press go live. And we can see here, I'm live and I can you know, be operating my camera, and then Ecamm Live can do a lot of fancy stuff with overlays and stuff like that. So um, if I wanted to you know, have a countdown in there, I could do that. I could add images and titles, lots of fancy stuff in Ecamm Live. It makes it really, really easy to do that. So that's why I recommend the software if you have a Mac. So let's pretend that I'm all wrapped up. I'll just press finish. So then I can view the post on YouTube and I will do that. And we can see here, I'm live. And I can, you know, be operating my, you know, have a countdown in there. I could do that. I could add images and titles, lots of fancy stuff in Ecamm Live. It makes it really, really easy to do that. So. So the live stream worked. It's super, super simple. Right now it's a private video on YouTube. Um, again, I could set this to public if I wanted to. I'll probably I'll just go ahead and delete this video. Uh, but that's, that's how it works. It's really that easy. Again, using the PTZ Optics camera, the Behringer interface, and then Ecamm Live. Again, if you're running on a Mac, it only takes like a couple seconds to get this stuff up and running. Now you know how to set up a live stream system at your church. In the near future, I'll be recording some of the services at our church at Mission Lakewood. We can't live stream from the school we meet at because we do not have a reliable internet connection there. There's only this really cruddy public Wi-Fi that's available at the school and it just would not be reliable to stream. But a cool trick you can do is you can record locally to your computer because like software like Ecamm can do that automatically and then you can actually play that video file back later within Ecamm and live stream just at a later time. And this could be a cool way to be able to have yourself or someone on your pastoral team engage with people during a live stream because you're not preaching a sermon or leading worship, but you can just be at home on the couch. So keep an eye on my channel as I'll be releasing more videos on this topic in the future. I'm really excited to show you how you can automate the PTZ Optics camera with Ableton Live. If you are a worship tech nerd, and you want an organized list of all the gear we use at my church plant, including all this live stream gear, then you should download my worship ministry toolkit linked below this video. Click the link, complete the form, I'll send you instant access. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends in ministry. You can check out some related videos right over here and don't forget to subscribe to the Church Fund channel so you can continue to receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.